In the United States, cancer impacts one in two men and one in three women. The biggest challenge facing oncologists today is how best to treat and manage patients with cancer. Which cancer patients have more aggressive disease and hence will benefit from more aggressive treatments like chemotherapy? And conversely, which cancer patients have less aggressive disease and therefore can avoid the toxic effects of chemotherapy like nausea and hair loss? Over the last half decade, new cancer treatments like immunotherapy have changed the landscape of how we treat cancer patients. And yet, only 25% of these patients will actually respond to these treatments. These treatments are also very expensive costing north of $200,000 per patient per year. These expensive treatments are directly responsible for the issue of financial toxicity that we have in the United States. Almost 42% of newly diagnosed cancer patients will lose their life savings, many within two years of that initial cancer diagnosis. Despite all the technological advancements of the 21st century, cancer physicians today still rely on relatively crude tools for risk stratification. The vast majority of risk calculators used to assign risk and hence aggressiveness of a tumor for an individual cancer patient still rely on features like cancer stage, which, while helpful, are still far from perfect. Many cancer patients assigned the same cancer stage will not respond or benefit in the same manner to the same treatments. The problem is the huge heterogeneity of the disease, even within cancer patients with the same stage. In other words, we need better tools for more granular compartmentalization of cancer patients beyond tumor stage, identifying smaller subsets of patients who will respond or benefit in a similar manner to cancer treatments. Over the last two decades, there have been a slew of molecular and genomic-based tests to identify which cancer patients have more aggressive disease and hence can benefit from more aggressive treatments like chemotherapy, and conversely, which patients have less aggressive disease and hence can avoid the toxicity of these therapies. The problem is that these tests are complex, involve destructive testing of tissue, and cost thousands of dollars per patient, putting them well beyond the realm of most cancer patients in low- and middle-income countries, like my native country, of India. When I was in my teens, a very dear aunt of mine passed away on account of breast cancer. I was working on my undergraduate degree in biomedical engineering, and my young aunt's death had a profound impact on me. I decided then that I had to do something with my training in biomedical engineering to alleviate the suffering that cancer causes in cancer patients and their loved ones. That initial inflection point led me to a PhD in bioengineering at the University of Pennsylvania, where I began to apply AI to CAT scans and MRI scans of cancer patients to develop new methods for detection of the disease. I met Dr. Michael Feldman, a pathologist at the university. Michael introduced me to the world of digital pathology, where high-resolution digital images were being created from tissue glass slides and then examined. When I told Mike about the work I was doing with AI and medical imaging, he asked me, would you like to try to develop an algorithm that can analyze these digital pathology images to identify the cancer? I took up the challenge. A couple of weeks later, I emailed Mike and asked him 
whether he might have the time to look at the results I had generated. I remember Mike's jaw dropping when he saw this. The AI is detecting prostate cancer on the image slides he had given me. We have to get a beer, he said. It was 8.30 a.m. on a Monday morning. But perhaps more than anything, it was at that moment that I realized that the work I was doing was important and could make a tangible impact on the lives of physicians and their critically ill patients. Today, I continue to harness the power of AI to further the field of precision medicine. Throughout my research career, I kept coming back to breast cancer. This was the disease that had killed my young aunt. From my oncologist colleagues, I learned that most women with early-stage breast cancer would have a good prognosis. The challenge was how best to manage and treat women with breast cancer. Many women with early-stage breast cancer did not need chemotherapy. They could avoid the nausea and the critically toxic side effects. A small subset of women did need the chemo. The question, of course, was how to identify those women who would receive the added benefit of chemotherapy and those women who could safely avoid it. This was the moment that I realized that perhaps the AI could be used with tissue biopsy images, not just to inform on whether the cancer was present or not, but more critically, to identify the aggressiveness of the disease and predict response to treatment. Ongoing research in our group is focused on using AI to identify patterns from tissue biopsy images, to identify which women with breast cancer have more aggressive versus less aggressive disease. We recently looked at a group of women for whom the existing molecular test indicated could avoid chemotherapy and its toxicity. The AI was able to identify 12% of women within this group who would have benefited from chemotherapy despite the toxicity. We also looked at a group of women for whom chemotherapy was recommended by the existing molecular test. Stunningly, the AI was able to identify 58% of women who could avoid chemotherapy and its toxicity. The big advantage of AI tools like this is that compared to expensive molecular tests, they cost pennies on the dollar, do not destroy any tissue, and with a cloud-based implementation, can be used to generate results almost instantaneously that can then be sent back to the ordering physician anywhere on the planet, be she in Atlanta, Mumbai, or Lagos. The only requirement is that the ordering lab or hospital have access to a slide scanner to digitize the slides. This technology is becoming more and more commonplace and economical. Another area where AI can have an impact is in lung cancer. Almost 240,000 Americans will be diagnosed with lung cancer in 2023. More than half will likely succumb to it. While immunotherapy has changed the landscape of how we treat cancers like lung cancer, it does not always work. In fact, it does not work the majority of the time for most cancers. The current biomarker, PDL1, that is used to identify which cancer patients will benefit from immunotherapy versus not, is not very accurate. This causes significant anxiety in physicians and their critically ill patients. These treatments can also result in significant financial strain. In other words, we need to do better. Firstly, we need to identify which cancer patients can successfully avoid toxic 
and expensive treatments because they have more indolent disease and hence can avoid these toxic therapies. Secondly, we need to identify which cancer patients will actually respond to certain treatments. And if they will not respond, be able to inform their physicians of this in advance so that their treatment courses can be changed upfront. Our group has been developing novel and interpretable AI tools that can quantitatively characterize the twistedness of tumor-associated vessels in order to evaluate which cancer patients will respond to immunotherapy and which patients will not. Specifically, we have recently shown that quantitative measurements of vessel twistedness, as determined by the AI on routine CAT scans, can predict which tumors are going to respond versus not. The more twisted the vessels, the less likely they are to respond. The smoother the vessels, the more likely they are to respond to immunotherapy. Perhaps even more intriguingly, when we looked at a group of tumors for whom the expression of PDL1 was low, in other words, those tumors where the current clinically employed biomarker suggested non responsiveness to immunotherapy, the AI was able to identify a subset of patients within this group who were actually likely to do well. Overdiagnosis and overtreatment of cancers today is resulting in a large number of cancer patients being subjected to unneeded toxicity and facing financial hardship. AI with routinely acquired data like CAT scans and tissue biopsy images can enable better risk stratification and prediction of response and benefit to cancer treatments. Although the data shown in this talk today is retrospective, that is, it came from patients who had been previously treated, the good news is that the AI is being used in clinical trials and is being employed in cancer patients who are currently being treated. We are already seeing that the AI is predicting treatment responsiveness. My team and I envision that the results from these clinical trials will pave the way for a world where physicians and their patients are able to use more precise data in their fight against this deadly disease across the globe. A world where someone's loved one, be it an aunt, a sister, or a husband, can not only benefit from early detection, but also receive courses of treatments that can give them the best fighting chance with the least toxic effects. Thank you.